The St. Lucia estuary is part of South Africa's first World Heritage Site, the Isimangaliso Wetland Park. So what is an estuary and how does it work? An estuary is a body of water which forms at the coast where a river meets the sea and where fresh water and seawater mix. Estuaries in South Africa are open to the sea through an inlet or mouth. At times, some of these may be closed by a sand barrier. Estuaries provide a wide variety of habitats for plants and animals that are specifically adapted to estuarine conditions. The St. Lucia estuary is classified as an estuarine lake. There are only nine estuarine lakes in South Africa. As part of a World Heritage Site, the St. Lucia estuary is recognized globally as a place of outstanding universal value. It is also a Ramsar site, recognized internationally as a wetland of global importance. The St. Lucia estuary is extremely large and accounts for 60% of the total area of South Africa's 300 estuaries. It provides refuge for many rare and endangered species and is particularly important for migrant estuary-dependent invertebrates, fish, water birds, crocodiles, and hippos. The Lake St. Lucia estuarine system receives most of its fresh water from five rivers. In the north, these rivers are Umkuze, Zinene, Kluhluwe, and Yalazi. The Umfalozi enters the system in the south at the estuary mouth. Of these five river catchment, the Umfalozi is the largest and makes up 60% of the total catchment surface area. Rivers bring in the basic building blocks needed to make the estuary work fresh water, nutrients, and sediments. Together, these inputs make for a very productive ecosystem. The area covered by water in an estuary changes continuously depending on rainfall, tides, groundwater levels, and whether the mouth is open or closed. The area in which estuarine processes, plants and animals occur is called the estuarine functional zone, which in St. Lucia looks like this. The different states of the Lake St. Lucia estuary. During periods of high rainfall or floods, the water levels in the estuary rises, fresh water conditions prevail, and the estuary mouth opens. Fresh water conditions attract animals and plants like water lilies, bulrushes, and ducks. During periods of average rainfall, the estuary has fresher conditions in the north and becomes more salty in its lower reaches as it gets closer to the sea. Under these conditions, the estuary mouth remains open, but is constricted. This range of fresh water and saline conditions attracts animals like ducks, tens, and pelicans. During dry periods, the estuary mouth is closed and there is little water entering the estuary from rivers. Evaporation from the lake's large surface area leads to a loss of water and the concentration of sea salt rises as more and more water evaporates. The estuary becomes saltier along its entire length and under certain conditions, it may be saltiest further from the sea. The high salinities create conditions attracting animals like terns, pelicans and flamingos. All of these states are natural. They help keep the estuary diverse and healthy and no single state defines it. These different states are largely determined by whether the estuary mouth is open or closed. What makes an estuary open and close? The status of an estuary mouth depends on the interplay between fresh water flowing out of the estuary and seawater flowing into it. When river flows are strong, any sand that is carried into the estuary by waves and tidal currents is washed back out to sea. And the estuary mouth is kept open. When river flows are weaker, they are no longer powerful enough to wash the incoming sand back out to sea. This sand then accumulates in the inlet and a sandbar forms, closing the mouth. Both open and closed mouth states are natural conditions in many estuaries. In the St. Lucia estuary, the mouth state depends primarily on the Umfolozi. This is because it is the biggest river flowing into the estuary and because it enters at its mouth, where the river's influence is very direct. It is the key to keeping the estuary open to the sea. During dry periods, 
The Umvolozi is sometimes the only river flowing into the estuary. When the mouth closes during droughts, this water helps to reduce the high salinities that develop as the water evaporates. Natural closure of the mouth protects the estuary by preventing the loss of fresh water to the sea and maintains the conditions required by plants and animals that are in the estuarine phase of their life cycles. This retention of water causes water levels to rise behind the sandbar, pushing water into the previously intertidal and drier areas of the estuarine functional zone. This is commonly known as back flooding and is a natural part of an estuary's life cycle. In the St. Lucia estuary, this results in a large increase in the available habitat, nutrients, and food. The St. Lucia estuary is an important nursery. The St. Lucia estuary is an important nursery for prawns and some juvenile fish like granta and stump nose. Animals that rely on estuaries to complete their life cycles breed out at sea and then enter estuaries in order to grow to maturity. When they are nearly adults, they leave the estuary and return to the sea to breed. And the cycle begins again. In order to survive and grow into adults, these species are completely dependent on the conditions found in estuaries. They also need to enter and leave estuaries at specific stages of their life cycles. If they are prevented from doing this because of unnaturally prolonged periods of mouth closure, they cannot complete their life cycles and their populations will decline and ultimately disappear. Because plants and animals have evolved together with their environment, the life cycles of estuarine adapted species are synchronized with the seasonal opening and closing of the estuary mouth. Any alteration in the natural cycle of opening and closing is detrimental to the health of the estuary. The Lake St. Lucia estuary has a history of human interference dating back to the early 1950s. Significant environmental change has also occurred in its five catchments. Watch part two in this video series to find out what the impact of this interference has been and what the Isimangaliso Wetland Park Authority has done to restore this important estuary.